Um, a lot of people in the world start eating more and more meat uh, in developing countries. And the second reason is that we need animal protein to feed other animals. Um, and that's actually a, a really big problem because in the European Union, for example, we produce actually only 26% of the proteins um, that we are current that we currently need to feed the most efficient um, livestock, the most efficient animals, uh, which are fish and poultry. Um, so, oh, sorry, this is, jumps ahead a little bit. Um, okay, I'm actually not doing this myself right now. <laughs> Okay, um, I think I'm now back in charge. Um, so insects offer a real opportunity to tackle this problem. Um, we need way less space um, to feed and grow them. We need way less feed in order to feed them. We need a fraction of the water it takes to grow beef, for example, um, and only a fraction of the CO2 emissions that it really takes to produce um, the common types of, of, of livestock that we, that we know today. Um, they are really competitive in their functionality. So um, the reason why animal proteins are still more efficient than plant proteins in many ways is because they're very close to um, our body proteins or other animal proteins. So that's why when, when animals or we ourselves eat uh, animal protein, um, we usually tend to digest it easier um, so our bodies can really deal with it. Uh, in an easier way. Um, and that's the, that's the case for insect proteins. Um, so we have a really good fatty acid profile, which is very close to olive oil. Um, and 100% of the, of the animal can be used. So nothing is really thrown away uh, when we or animals eat insects. Um, the, the, the droppings of, of the insects can be used as a fertilizer. And as already mentioned, they're also uh, more efficient in terms of uh, space than soy, for example, um, more efficient in their water use, um, as well as more CO2 efficient. So we can really close the loop here uh, when using feed, uh, food waste um, to feed insects uh, and grow them as a protein source. Um, so um, we've started out a couple of years back in Hong Kong. So we have two offices right now. One is in Hong Kong and one is in, in Vienna. Um, we founded the company in 2015 in Hong Kong, and the last couple of years we've been around uh, a lot in the B2C space. So we built uh, these mini insect farms um, that you can see here on the slide um, to empower people to grow proteins on their desktops, on their countertops. Um, and um, this, is, uh, this was sold into more than 48 uh, countries worldwide. Um, and to a lot of schools, universities. Um, and uh, what we saw after the launch of our first product, uh, which we launched on Kickstarter, and then we spent a lot of time in Shenzhen, China to manufacture it ourselves. Uh, we saw that actually a lot of our customers uh, were less interested in producing a lot of mealworms to eat themselves, but actually they were really interested in the educational aspect of it, in sharing it with their families and their communities. Um, and that's why we um, launched our second product, which we called Hive Explorer. And uh, it's specifically for the utilization in schools and for educational purposes. Um, okay, yeah, here you see just a, 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 um, a really short glimpse into the product development. So it went through a couple of different stages. Um, the very first one was with a different kind of insect. And then we actually went to Africa and we uh, multiplicated this, um, this, uh, this project in several um, continents, uh, Africa, Asia, uh, the United States in Hawaii and so on um, until it became what it is, what it is today. Um, it went through to customers um, globally here in China, actually, um, in the US, I believe, in the UK, and people did very interesting things with it. They recoded it. They um, obviously cooked with it and shared shared it really um, lively in our communities. Um, and that's actually our educational unit. 
So we utilize our mini insect farms in order to um, um, make the topic of sustainability more prevalent in schools. Um, so you can imagine this as a, as a science kit. So uh, you might know these uh, little ancient, ancient age treatops, um, um, uh, um, things that you can buy as eggs and then you put them in water and they swim around. Um, maybe you can compare it a little bit to that, um, just that you can actually use your food waste that you have at home and feed it to the insects, harvest the fertilizer um, to put into your plants again. And it comes with a lot of um, educational material um, that will teach kids specifically, but also the grown-ups about um, the world of insects, what they do to benefit our environment, um, how we can use them to uh, make the world more sustainable, to feed animals and humans, um, and to re upcycle and recycle um, waste. So we've done this um, in, in, in quite, a, uh, quite a huge way in, in uh, Asia, in uh, schools all, all over Hong Kong, and the product is actually uh, right now being manufactured um, and we will ship next month, which was um, actually quite a, um, quite a big journey to go from the first product to the second one. We anticipated it to be a little bit smoother, but it still takes a lot of, um, a lot of time to, to even do just a very small changes in the product to make it, a, a, make, make it go to next, the next level up. Um, and uh, what we're working on uh, since last year is, um, is the scale up of our technology. So we patented our technology. It's about, um, you know, really providing the, the most efficient way of growing uh, insect proteins on the smallest footprint possible. Um, and um, we have made the next step to, to really make this on, to, to implement this on a large scale uh, and do this in an industrial way. Um, so on the one hand, we manufacture small units for education um, to make people more aware of, um, um, of sustainability matters and recycle and upcycle in their own homes. And on the other hand, we uh, do this on an industrial level. And with that, we're producers of proteins and fertilizers um, that is sold B2B um, to companies that then make products out of it. Um, so at the moment, we have a pilot project with uh, Europe's largest retailer, and they have a huge amount of bakery waste specifically that they currently, um, that currently mostly goes to waste. Um, so we take that bakery waste, we feed it to our insects, um, we take our technology for it, um, and then the outcome is our ingredient um, the alternative proteins, as well as fertilizer. So the fertilizer goes back to grow grain and actually produce, produce food again for people, um, while the protein in green, um, feeding pets even, fertilizer for plants, and also into uh, sports nutrition or other nutritional products for people. Um, so that's how we, that's how we close, close the loop. Um, we've gone through multiple milestones for this, and we're now scaling up um, and that is happening in Vienna. So we're really doing this with urban uh, protein farms, which we're pretty excited about. Um, so if you look at the impact um, that we have, uh, we compare different factors to it. So um, we have CO2 emissions that we're saving. We have land that we're saving because we can go vertical and we save a lot of um, feed that we would otherwise use to um, um, to, well, grow crops for, for livestock. Um, and um, also, um, if, used, uh, if we use the ingredient to um, feed fish, for example, or feed poultry even in the future, um, then this saves a lot of fish meal that is currently sourced from the ocean. Um, so we save in our five-year business plan um, at the moment, we're saving about 70,000 tons of ocean fish um, when replacing um, the fish meal that we can produce with, with insect, insect proteins or the insect meal, replace it with the amount of, of insect meal that we are planning to produce. Um, we would fulfill the protein need of half of Brussels population um, for, for one year, uh, if you compare it to Brussels. Um, 
we're saving the arable land as big as Brussels as a city. And we would take all cars in Brussels off the road for one year in terms of CO2 emissions. Um, all right, I think that's pretty much uh, it from my, um, from my end. Um, I hope this gave you a little bit of an overview and I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. All right, thank you so much for your, for your talk, Katarina. We have a few questions from the audience right now. Uh, so for example, what do you see the future of living farms? Where do you see living farms in the future and what do you wanna do? Right, um, so I see living farms as, uh, our, our goal is to become one of the largest producers of uh, technology and, and, and protein itself. Um, so I do see us grow in these two ways that I mentioned in education. So really making sure that people are aware of the benefits of, of upcycling food waste into higher value um, products um, and uh, producing, uh, producing this on a larger scale uh, in order to close the loop on a, in, you know, in a, in a really, in a way that is, that has a large impact on communities and on countries. Thank you. Uh, and the second question we have is, how did you actually come up with the idea of using insects? That's a long story. <laughs> um, it started with me going to Hong Kong. I'm, my background uh, is industrial design. So I started out um, going uh, to, to Hong Kong and China as an industrial designer, um, wanting to make products. Um, and then at some point I realized that um, I I didn't really want to use my time so much to, uh, you know, design the next um, the next headphones that are going to be disposed disposed of very soon, or the next car interior. Um, but I really wanted to use it to uh, make the world better and uh, have a real positive impact on on our future. And that's that's what I was inspired to do when I visited Hong Kong and I saw the density of the place and that. Um, there's very little space to grow things uh, and that we need new solutions for that. Okay, thank you. And one more final question is, how do you see financing of the next farm in Austria? How do you plan to finance your next farm? Finance your next farm? Um, right now, luckily, we are financed. Um, so we have funding in place at the moment to do our next, um, our next phase. Um, but of course, we're, we're, we already have it in our plan um, to, to go into fundraising again. Um, and we, see, we, we seek to finance that um, out of revenues that we, that we will already make. Um, but of course, that is not going to be enough uh, for a, a, a real big scale up. Um, so then we're going to look into uh, venture capital um, and other forms of investment from outside. Thank you so much for your time, your, your speech and your answers. Thank you so much. Uh, and afterwards, we, we're continuing with Stefan Pont. So thank you so much, Katarina. Great. For being Thanks. part of Avenue. Thank you. Bye. Bye.